Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, this is Judy, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, and I'm back again today because Amber Lynn posted an hour-long and eight-minute video of her reacting to, oh lordy, it's Jordy, <laughs> reacting to her. And, I don't know, y'all, just a very reminiscent of years ago when Homegirl reacted to me reacting to her walking to the tree. Do y'all remember? <laughs> Do y'all remember that, that video? And she really thought she was doing something with reacting to me, and I reacted to her, and my video is sitting at like 500,000 some views, and hers is at like 100,000, and she edited and manipulated the video to make it look like I was saying things that I wasn't saying. Do y'all remember that? Well, <laughs> homegirl just still has not learned anything, anything since that. And she thought, you know, I have just done such a great job of reacting to, to other people's content, to my own content. I'm such a reaction channel girl. I'm just going to live in this fantasy world where I am an entertaining, transformative reactor, just like all of my favorite YouTubers like Zachary Michael, Oh Lordy is Shorty, Alex is Shook and so on and so forth. So, I'm not doing an actual reaction today because if I had reacted to an hour long video, it, is, it would be forever long. <laughs> it would be so long. It's already gonna be a pretty long video despite all of that. Like, cause I'm gonna show you clips and I'm gonna talk a lot about a lot of different things, but we're not doing a standard reaction. I'm gonna give you a recap and all of that situation type of deal today. But before we get to that, I would like to just thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Wonder. Wonder is an app that uses artificial intelligence to help you create new digital art all from an app on your phone. It can help you if you need to bring an idea to life, if you're trying to think of something fun and creative to draw, if you're struggling to find inspiration, it can do all of those things by using AI to help you put your ideas into an image. Using Wonder is really easy. You just type in a prompt of any kind. Now I'm gonna use this for inspiration and motivation you know, one of my, if you don't know anything about me, one of my lifelong goals is to be on reality TV. And one of those shows that I would love to see myself on is Survivor. I'm going to pick an adjective to describe myself. So let's go with non-binary pink haired and then <laughs> non-binary pink haired. And then I'm going to pick a noun. So we'll put in YouTuber and then pick a situation. So goes on the TV show Survivor. Oh, it would help if I spelled Survivor correctly. And then it gives you the option to pick through different styles. If you have the premium version, you get to pick from several different types of art styles. So I'm just gonna randomly pick one. I feel like that could be fun. That could be fun. Um, so let's go with hyper-realistic. Why not? And then I'm gonna push create. And then it's gonna generate two pictures for me that demonstrate me being on the critically acclaimed television show, Survivor. Are you ready? So here's the first one, and that is just so funny to me. <laughs> like, that is so me one day on, <laughs> on, on Survivor. That is hilarious. And then here's the other one. I'm getting less vibes of me in this, although I do see it. The first one is, Chef's Kiss. So if you're interested in getting a free trial to the premium version of the Wonder app, you can click the link down below in my description box and in the pinned comment so that you can put your creativity to the test. The premium version comes with 20 plus styles, uh, faster loading times, unlimited art, and no ads. So again, if you're interested in trying out Wonder and getting a free premium trial, to the app, make sure to check out the link down below in my description box. Thank you so much to Wonder once again for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get in to this hour long video that Amber Lynn posted of herself reacting to, oh lordy, it's Jordy reacting to herself. Now, just as a preface, once again, I don't watch other reaction channels. I am aware of who, oh lordy, it's Jordy is. I just have never sat down and watched one of his videos on my own because watching Amber Lynn's content once 
on my own is quite enough. <laughs> it's quite enough. Although I do support y'all in supporting other reaction channels. I just don't have that kind of time in my life. But also let me be clear that Amberlynn has not learned a darn thing, like I already mentioned, since reacting to me so long ago, okay? One thing she hasn't learned is that she hasn't learned how to film a reaction without setting her laptop up next to her. And in fact, she, she says she doesn't have time or care enough to learn. And we're gonna do it in Amberlynn Reed fashion. I don't care enough to learn how to edit where I don't need my laptop. I don't care about that. I don't care to have the little thing down here like all reaction channels have. I just don't care enough. I'm not a reaction channel. I'm just doing this for fun. And she did once upon a time care enough to try to learn because I haven't brought this up in so long, but I just know somebody will in the comments. So I mark as well put it out there myself that a long time ago, we're talking years ago, before she even reacted to me, she reached out to me in Twitter DMs and asked me how to do a reaction where you put the picture within the picture. You know what I'm saying? Like how I do my, <laughs> my reaction reactions all the time here. And I even tried to help her. Granted, I, the way I was doing it at the time, very convoluted. There are much easier ways to do it that I have since learned. But like, I still tried to help her. But heaven forbid she tried to do anything to improve the content quality, etc. of her channel. She's very content, as you're going to find out throughout this entire video, with just doing the same old shit that she always does, no desire to do anything to better her channel, and we're all just haters, and she won't do it for us, so just keep that in mind as we move forward. But she also still hasn't learned that bringing attention to the people that don't like her, to the reaction channels, to the negative comments on her, her videos, doesn't do anything except amplify those voices and give them attention. The last time she brought Jordy up, which we're gonna talk about at some point during this video too, but the last time she brought him up, he gained a significant number of, of subscribers. And similarly, when she brought me up in a clip recently, I gained at least 300 subscribers on a video where normally a new video gets me anywhere from like 50 to 100 new subscribers, depending on the day, depending on the video. And I do have to say, I mean, this was a long time ago, but when I reacted to her reacting to me, I gained so many subscribers then. Like, we're talking, like, I gained, like, a thousand subscribers overnight, which is really unheard of growth for my channel. <laughs> like, I don't know. There's maybe been a couple other times that something like that has happened on my channel. Otherwise, I usually have a pretty steady growth, um, consistent growth when it comes to gaining subscribers and things like that. In fact, I would say any of the other times that I had a significant spike in the growth of my subscribers has been because of shoutouts from Amberlynn, Chantal, or anybody else I might be covering that acknowledged me. And most importantly, she still hasn't learned that doing a reaction and making it interesting and entertaining is something that actually takes skill. And I have yet to see any kind of reaction she's done be super interesting or super entertaining. Although I do appreciate some of her points that she made in this video and we can talk about that. But in terms of it like being organically like funny, interesting, silly, like she does a lot when you're watching this reaction. She does a lot where she's like, it's clear she's already got thoughts brewing in her head about what she wants to say. It doesn't feel authentic. And I don't know why she doesn't realize that this isn't necessarily super easy and lazy content like she assumes it is. Now, she can obviously make content about whatever she wants to make content about. I'm not gonna keep her from that. Like, it is her channel. She's welcome to do whatever, so keep that in mind. I also wanna be clear that I'm not asking her to make changes to her content for myself. When I provide feedback on what I think about the channel, I'm being genuine in that I think it would really help out her channel. You know, I get a lot of brand new people who've never done YouTube before ever who ask me for advice and value it. I don't, it's hard for me to get back to all the people that ever reach out and say like, hey Zach, like what do I do? How do I do this? Could you help me with this? But you know, sometimes I think people <laughs> who have been doing YouTube for a while 
could benefit from some of the advice that I have to give in terms of like elevating their content or making their content better. But that's neither here nor there. I don't want her to do any of this for me. I'm just giving my commentary on what I'm watching. And because of all that, I really have to say that I think you should spend, and I'm going to repeat this I'm sure several times today, spend less time focused on the people who don't like you, who don't like your content, who have negative things to say about your content, and spend more time on focusing on the people who do enjoy your content and making the content that you like and enjoy. Because this is all coming on the heels of Miss Amberlynn Reed uh, just within the past few weeks talking about how uh, detrimental things like the comment section and reaction channels and things like that are to her mental health. And yet we're watching her actively choose to dedicate a whole entire video to somebody that she said herself that she would never watch another video of because she thought his content was disgusting, okay? So let's just be clear about that. And she does start off the whole video talking about her thoughts on reaction channels. In fact, she makes a statement about not liking somebody or not understanding how a channel can dedicate their whole content just on one person. Um, I don't mind a reaction here or there, but to have a whole channel that is relying on someone else's content so you can react to every single video they put up or even 90, 80 to 90 percent of every single video they put up. Come on now. But I need to remind you all that she was just doing a Halloween live stream not that long ago where she talked about how much she loves Chantal reaction channels and specifically shouted out Kaya Simon's life. I watch Chantal as if I am, I just like thoroughly enjoy watching her like everyone else, I watch reaction channels of her. Like, I'm gonna be honest. I watch Kaya, is that her name? I, I just find her to be entertaining. On nights where I can't sleep, it's just entertaining to me. Um, she's, she's a wild one. I enjoy her though. And also shouted out that same person on her community tab post. And when you go to that person's YouTube page and you look at their live streams consistently for the past two, three weeks, she has been live streaming over and over and over and over again about Chantal Marie, Chantal show, foodie booty, okay? And I don't have a problem with that. I'm just stating facts because this is somebody that Amber Lynn says she loves watching and yet is doing the exact thing that Amber Lynn says is a problem in this video. <laughs> Amber Lynn also mentioned she's watching this video on 1.5 times speed. Oh, and by the way, I am watching this at 1.5 speed, so I hope it's not too fast for you guys. Normally, I watch all YouTube videos at two times speed. Um, my attention span is super short. So I needed to go by quicker and faster. And I'm watching her video, or when I originally watched it, I also watched on 1.5 times speed because I had shit to do today. I had a therapy appointment. I have a meeting with somebody to talk about doing a charity stream on Twitch. I had to film this video, take my dogs out, eat lunch. I'm a busy girl, uh, but it is not lost on me that she said that the reason she watches those kinds of videos on super speed is because she has a short attention span, yet she put out an hour and eight minute long video. And I have to say, you can save yourself a lot of time with this particular video if you go into it knowing that a majority of the, the content of this video is her just going on and on and on about how nobody should be reacting to her boring content, that there's no reason why anybody should ever want to react to her boring content. I clipped, let me count here, one, two, three, four, five, six different times where she talked at length about it, and I will include all of those clips right here. You know what I find very interesting about reaction channels? I don't understand the thought process behind reacting to a vlog, um, unless you know, someone like goes on vacation somewhere super awesome or like something really exciting happens in the vlog. But nine times out of 10, like a vlogger on YouTube is very much like day to day life, which is the boring stuff, if you will. Um, reacting to vlogs, it's not entertaining. See, like 
like I said, I watch quite a few vloggers and they all vlog this type of stuff. They all show themselves doing their makeup, talking about little piddly things as such grammar. Just like very tedious things and I enjoy that but to sit there and like react to it is so boring regardless of who you're reacting to. I, they have hauls every single vlog <laughs> and I'm like relatable or I, it used to be relatable. I'm trying to slow it down a little bit but um it's like my favorite type of content but to react to boring like what is the point it's a vlog it's a vlog i don't i yes there are reaction channels who react to songs or music videos or like little clips of things but there is no reaction channel that is away from Amberlynn or Chantel who takes one creator or two creators, especially vloggers, oh my God, and reacts to every single one of their vlogs. I've tried to find it. I've tried. I can't find it anywhere. You're bored because you're reacting to a vlog of just a normal everyday life person. This isn't the content that you should react to. React to something thrilling, something that people actually feel like is worth a reaction. Like, do you see how bored he is? This is a vlog. This is what people vlog. I mean, the people I watch, and I watch quite a few vloggers. Um, this isn't what people react to. It's just funny because it's like, he knows what my content is. It's like, what are you looking for? What are you in search of? What are you in need of? Because I don't think I'm the one. Like, you might have to fire me. Because if you're this bored, you might have to fire me. And that's not even all the times. It was just the times where I was like, oh, let me, let me make a note to write down that she's talking about this in this section of my notes. So there's certainly more than just this. And I also am not playing the whole entire length of every time she went on because she droned on and on and on about my content is boring. Vlogging is supposed to be boring. This isn't supposed to be entertaining, which is like such a weird kind of like gotcha moment. Like, I don't understand why you're bragging about having boring content. I honestly don't find all of it boring, but you're out here saying that it is. So, like, this is how you're selling your content to your audience. Like, you would only like this if you are okay with liking boring shit. And if you think it's too boring for people to react to, why would you think it would be any kind of interesting for people to watch on its own? And for the record, you can have a reaction to all kinds of stuff. Like, you can react to something being boring and you reacting and thinking, wow, this is boring? That's a reaction. <laughs> that is my feeling I get when I watch this video. It is boring. You know what I'm saying? So that is a reaction by definition. Feeling bored by content is a reaction. Being able to make that reaction entertaining and interesting is a skill, which Amberlynn doesn't really possess. I do also want to address that she claims that she has never seen anybody else ever react to other types of vloggers and even mentions that she allegedly tried to find such a channel. And she wasn't looking hard enough because I found this channel by just searching for learning to be fearless reaction. And it was like literally the first channel that came up. And Learning To Be Fearless is literally the vlogger that she references the most in terms of talking about content she loves. So yeah, so many of her arguments in this video rely on her admitting and resigning herself to just having the most boring, stale, uninteresting content ever. And I guess if that's the argument you want to make for why we shouldn't be reacting, then okay, girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but I find it hard to believe that anybody would be actually tuning in to your channel if there weren't many channels making what you do on your channel more interesting. I want to give a shout out to her shading Becky for not paying rent. Um, I'm just like not used to that type of energy from someone, especially someone who like this isn't shade towards anybody, but it's like every single month when she pays me like we just do it through venmo because it's easier 
she sends me rent through Venmo. She'll send me like the electricity, utility money, like et cetera, et cetera. Like it feels like I'm getting free money and we joke about it every single time. I'm like, oh, when you pay in me, I'm just not used to like getting large chunks of money for other people paying their way um, for living. So it's kind of cool. It's like, I only have to pay half the bills now, like ma'am. I'm just like grateful for that type of situation to deal. I don't know, Amberlynn, maybe if you hadn't encouraged Becky to quit her job and rely solely on you for income, you could have had somebody contributing to rent and utilities and bills and things like that. A little less than halfway through the video, she decides to let us know that her mood is going to be switching for the remainder of the video. So you're about to see here, my mood completely changes. Um, I give this reaction channel in the beginning benefit of the doubt. I am accepting their advice, um, sharing my anxiety, you know, saying how he's cute and just kind of giving him the benefit of the doubt and accepting what he's saying. Um, if I disagree, I do it politely, etc. But then this is where I start getting very upset and frustrated and I feel like this is just a perfect example of that I do accept criticism. I do accept reaction channels. But then when you start speculating on my health and insinuating in a very low-key way that I could be lying, this is when I get angry and you can definitely see. And at first I had a hard time articulating and thinking about like there was just something that felt a little off about her barging in and saying that mid video and I was trying to articulate and think about why it was so weird. I think it kind of sort of felt like a little bit manufactured that she was just jumping in in the middle of this reaction to do that because you know like when you watch one of my reactions, I don't have to come in and tell you, hey, I'm about to be very angry. Like, you know what emotion I am displaying, exhibiting, whoever, whatever. And then I started thinking about that's that's what it is. Because as you watch on in the video, nothing about her mood actually really changes outside of she becomes a little bit more critical of Jordy, probably because he started saying things that that conflicted with what her thoughts were. And prior to that point in the video, he wasn't saying anything that was like overly conflicting with her own view of herself and her mind. I also want to take this time to say that throughout the video, she said that she was giving him the benefit of the doubt. Earlier in the video prior to this, she said that, you know, she had watched, she hadn't watched many of his videos and that's why she chose him to react to because she didn't, wasn't coming in with any like understanding of what his point of view was. So I decided to choose a reaction channel that I've only seen a few of their videos because I don't really know their take on me completely. I didn't want to do a reaction channel that I've seen plenty of their videos. I already know the things they're going to complain about, what they're going to say. Um, so I decided to choose someone different. But that shit is such a lie. That shit is such a lie because she full on watched one of his videos during the Halloween live stream. She full on talked at length about one of his videos in a video vlog of hers. And in this very video, she even acknowledges that she <laughs> had watched one of his videos before. <laughs> she did. I don't even know anymore just because of like recent events. Like, as you guys don't know, she watched my... She put up my one episode from the other day on her Halloween live stream. On Halloween, she got on here and I did. she was like... I was laughing because, you know, if someone says something funny and I think it's funny, even if I hate them, I'm going to laugh. And yes, before I did call you foul because you were putting out into the world or into your little community that I was lying about my hospital visit. And yeah, that upset me. That frustrated me. It angered me. So I think it's really disingenuous for her to come in here acting like she didn't have any preconceived notion about who O oh Lordy and Shorty was. I mean, it, it really was just foolish. Now the mood shift really happens, I guess, from her point of view, because Jordy starts speculating about 
her medical diagnoses and things like that. You know me, wait, hold on. Gotta bring out the speculation in me. I'm just saying, like, I, I have never known myself or anyone to go and have like a slew of medical issues, like the Golden Corral buffet of medical issues and have... I, I don't think this type of speculation is healthy for anybody. Like speculating someone's health like i'm literally i've been so frustrated and scared with this whole thing and i've shared with you guys every step of the way you guys confused imagine how i was feeling like i was so confused what type of person does that make you to speculate on someone else's health and fears and anxieties of what they're going through and let me just say, I would not personally, y'all know this, I don't like to speculate about her health. I'll comment on things that she shares about her own health, but I'm not out here suggesting that any of her diagnoses are wrong or correct or whoever, whatever. I generally just take her at face value until she says weird things that conflict, i.e. like when she was saying that she never brought up to the lymphedema specialist how she's seeing a psychologist for her binge eating disorder, right? Like those two things conflict and don't make sense to me. But outside of that, I don't try to speculate on things that she has been diagnosed with. So I do have to say, I, I it was a little cringe for me to watch him do that just because it's not something I personally would do. However, for her to get so upset that he is speculating because the story was confusing, because she consistently was like giving updates without having all the information, she was not sharing stuff, she hasn't shared every step of the way. She's like, I've shared every step of the way of this experience. No, you haven't. No, you haven't because you came on here onto your channel and scolded us, the viewers, because we didn't see all the conversations you had with your doctor. We don't know what happened with your doctor. Yeah, you left things out. <laughs> we only know what you show us. So when you leave out parts of the conversation or parts of the story that happened, people start to get confused, especially when you're a terrible communicator. Like you are so bad at telling stories that it's so confusing and people always have questions. That's what leads to like probably 75% of the speculation about you on the internet. And in fact, an example of that is when Jordy talks about thinking it's only been a week's worth of time that she was going to all these doctors and Amber Lynn clarifies the timeline. Everything is resolving itself within a week's time. It's just... It hasn't been a week's time. I don't know if you're playing with a traveler game or if you're time traveling. I don't know what you're doing, but it hasn't been a week. Um, It's been over a month of just like fear, tests, confusions, diagnoses, confusions, confusions, and fear. And for you to even be questioning, it's just kind of sad. And yeah, Bestie, that's part of the confusion is that you film a whole bunch of stuff in advance. We never really know what the timeline is. And then people get confused. And listen, I generally, like there was that whole span of time, most of 2022, when you were just uploading content that you'd filmed weeks prior, where I didn't care because it was clear you weren't really doing anything that was dependent on time anyways. It like, could have been any given day. But when we're talking about the, the diagnosis diagnoses and how fast or not fast they happen and you don't give us any context for the time that it's happening in yeah people are gonna be confused bestie and and to some extent that's on you for for not clarifying that to begin with she also takes a lot of time to talk about the views on her channel views such a hot topic lately um when it comes to my channel i never look at video views per video. I've never done that. Very rare. I've always looked at monthly views. The views that I get, I'm so beyond grateful for. A lot of people are on YouTube and they don't even get that many. I started YouTube thinking that only like a hundred people would watch me and somehow, some way, things just got bigger, better, grander. Um, I got the most views when I was the least happy. I think success is more than views. It's about the way that your audience is, how they treat you, how you treat them, 
the vibe around your channel, your content, your life. I don't think it's about views. I think success is more than views. It's about the way that your audience is, how they treat you, how you treat them, the vibe around your channel, your content, your life. I don't think it's about views because if it was, the time in my life where I was the most miserable, trigger warning, unaliving, um, I just didn't want to be alive anymore. And it's not something I really talked about. I would share like small glimpses of that and try to talk about it. But then people would say I was just doing it for sympathy. To feel like you did not be, want to be alive anymore and sharing that and like slightly having a cry for help and for people to tell you that you're lying and you're only doing that for sympathy... That's a rough feeling. And let me just be clear that I think it's it's disingenuous for any YouTubers to say that they don't care about the views because uh, why are you putting up content on your channel if you don't want people to watch it? But I do believe to some extent that she's not mad that she doesn't have more views. Really the only reason I'm even bringing this up is because this has led into a conversation. She, she starts off talking about the views and it leads into a conversation about how the time when she was getting the most views were when she was the most unhappy. And she also brings up conversations about how during that time in 2019, she wanted to unalive herself. And what I specifically just like want to set the record straight on in case any of you are confused is that she talks about how she could never talk about it on her channel because people said that she was only doing it for views and sympathy. And she might have felt that way, and there certainly might have been some examples of that, but I honestly, truly only remember her ever talking about it once, or ever bringing it up once, or alluding to it once, and it was during 2019, I think that was the year, where she was literally doing a 100-day posting everyday challenge, and she was so close to getting to the end, and then one day she posts a video where she's like, I can't do this anymore, the comments are getting to me, the people are getting to me, I just have to quit. And so I, and, and she alluded to having thoughts of unaliving herself in that video. And then she immediately came back the next day and was just like chipper and fine. And granted, I think between when she had filmed that original video to the one that came the next day, like an actual real life Amber Lynn world, a couple weeks had passed, so she was probably in a different place, but she just acted like nothing was wrong. And so many people were concerned at the time. Like several people were concerned for her well being, they were concerned about her mental health. And when people followed up with her about it, she just acted like it was no big deal, that that wasn't what was happening. And in fact, let me just read the Instagram story post that she made at the time for you. Somebody said to her in an Instagram story at the time, in your video, you said, I don't think I can live anymore. Don't you think that sounds like suicidal ideation? Because she had been saying like she had never felt that kind of way before. And she said, definitely sounds like it. I was super depressed that day and I felt defeated. I didn't want to die though. I'm sorry for anyone I offended. I'm now going to be moving on from this conversation because it's triggering to not only me, but it's triggering to those currently suffering in silence. And I don't, I don't disagree. And I think her response when she finally decided to respond was fine. But that was a time where people really cared about her. People reached out to her. Nobody said, you can't share this. And in fact, the only reason people got frustrated is because she acted like she didn't say it until she was finally pushed to respond to it on Instagram. As one small point of clarification, another reason people were really upset at the time is because she had posted this video that was recorded weeks prior, knowing that she was going to come back to YouTube the very next day anyways, and had left that video up with the worry um, or the language made it sound like she wanted to unalive herself. So I just wanted to clarify that that was part of why people were also so worried and also upset when she came back the very next day seeming just fine. And obviously I hate hearing that anybody's ever felt that way. It's a way that I had felt in high school and in when I was an undergrad and I wouldn't wish that on anybody. It's a horrible feeling to feel. It's devastating. But I just felt like it was also important to include like what happened at the time because people were very supportive 
at least from my recollection. I'm sure there were people who weren't, which is par for the course on Amber Lynn's channel. But again, she, she has a challenge of looking at the people who are supporting at her and instead focusing on the people who don't. Which speaking of, she mentions in this video that she has thousands of people who wait for her to upload daily. I have thousands of people who wait for my content daily, who wait for my content every other day, who wait for my content weekly, who watch it while they're eating, who watch it while they're on their way to work on a bus, who watch it during their break time during school, who watches it when they have anxiety, who watches it when they're lonely. I am not going anywhere. And I'm just like, yeah, okay, focus on them, bestie. Focus on what they want, what they enjoy. Like, it, that's why it's hard for me to understand why you would dedicate this whole entire video to somebody who who is not excited to watch your content per you. She also wants to know what the point of reacting is and says that reaction channels always skirt around trying to answer like what the point of their channels are. I'm grateful that you want to continue reacting to me, but I just don't, I don't, I don't see the point. I'm confused by the point and I'm trying to find it. Reaction channels skirt around it and they never like, like, what's the point? Like, why are you doing this? Why are you reacting to boring vlogs? Knowing my content is boring. And I just want to be clear that I've never skirted around this Amberlynn. And in fact, I think I made a whole video where I addressed it for you because you were asking questions about me on Instagram or Snapchat or something like that. And I said, and I'll say again, that I enjoy watching and following along with your content. I watch it like it's a reality television show that I would watch on my own, like The Real Housewives, Survivor, Big Brother, whatever it might be. And in all of those shows, sometimes there's really good episodes, sometimes there's bad episodes, sometimes there's boring episodes. And I generally have thoughts on them regardless. And so that's why I continue to watch you and talk about your content because it's like talking to friends about the reality TV I watch, okay? And that means I'm gonna watch the good, the bad, and the boring. There's also this moment where Jordy is talking about how he's just bored with her content, which is what leads to a lot of Amber Lynn being like, if you're so bored, why do you watch blah, 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 whatever. He talks about considering doing something else and Amber Lynn interprets the situation entirely incorrectly. I know, I, I feel like I say this every week and I feel like you guys are getting really sick of it, but exploring other options come 2023, it, it, it's gotta. Do it's it. Because I, I, can't, I can't be doing, you know, let, let me put on my makeup. Uh, let me sit on this bench outside the doctor's office and tell you guys that my medical thing was a fluke. Uh, let's go inside this antique store and look at something. Girl. This is a vlog. I'm getting ready to go to the doctors, showing you my makeup, talking a bit about my past. I go to the doctor. I share my medical with you. I tell you what happened. I'm actually really fucking happy. This is a good vlog. This is good news vlog. This is good news and you're mad that i was sitting outside of my doctor's office with good news come on now like just watching from what you provided and not whatever his original video was although it didn't seem to me that there was any editing but i'm just saying just from watching the same thing that amber lynn sat and watched at no point did I get the vibe that he was mad. Like he didn't come across as mad to me at all. It just sounded like he was bored of watching you. And if he was mad, then the reason for him being mad was that you're boring. Not that he was mad that you got a good diagnosis or a report from your doctor, which is how you're presenting it. She's presenting it like, He's so mad that she got good news from the doctor. I did not get that at all. He was just saying that your content was boring. He didn't say, God, I'm so mad that she got a good report from her doctor. What what video were you watching, bestie? And of course, Jordy compares her to Chantal and Amberlynn gets mad about that comparison. Your biggest competitor, not size, views. Foodie booty? Not size. I didn't think that. Thanks for pointing that out, though. And comparing me to Chantel constantly, it's like, okay, we're both two females who are fat, but we are nothing alike. We live completely different lives. 
So why are we constantly compared? So, of course, we'll get mad about being compared to Chantal, who you enjoy watching, by the way, Amber Lynn. So I don't know why you're so mad about that when you seem to enjoy her and can ignore the fact that she's a bald baguette. But we can't compare you to that, but you have no qualms comparing yourself to Trisha Paytas, Shane Dawson, or David Dobrik. And of the three, the only one you're even remotely similar to is Trisha Paytas, and hardly even that. Like, it makes no sense to me. She also spends some time uh, clarifying that she won't be making content for you, specifically in this case being Jordy, but then in general also like addresses all reaction channels and says, I'm not here to make content for you. And I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to my viewers haters or supporters. I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to you, the reactor. Fire me. Truly. And I, I just, I don't know what kind of content you want to react to. I'm not making my vlogs of my life reactable. I'm making them for the people who enjoy them for the right reasons. And to be honest, I agree with her to some extent. Like, I agree. Like, you should make the content that you want to make and that you know that your fans and audience and supporters enjoy. Like, I would never ask for you to make something just to please me, Zachary Michael. Although I do consider myself a part of your audience who would like to enjoy your content. But, like, ultimately, I want you to make content that you're proud of and that you'll stand by. And with all that being said, I don't know why then in this case you're pandering to reaction channels and trying to instigate drama with reaction channels and things like that. Like, I know you said at the beginning of this video that your supporters allegedly asked for this kind of content, but I, I find it hard to believe that people who genuinely like you and enjoy you for like your vlogs and weight loss content wanted to see you do this. But ultimately, if you're so happy making the content that you do make for yourself, then just do that, bestie. Like, do it, be confident in that, and move forward in your life. For what it's worth, Amberlynn believes fate led her to this video, to watch this video, that the universe came together to bring her here to this particular video. Oh, where does my view of you stand? This is quite the video for me to react to. I'm not going to lie. I was like meant to watch this, I think. I love when the universe just like goes, Amberlynn, taps me on my shoulder. There's something I need you to do. I listened this time. I did. Girl, the universe didn't do shit for you. You are just <laughs> obsessed with with keeping up with what everybody has to say. You sit at home and you watch reaction channels. You watch Jordy. You watch me. You watch Alex's Shook. And who knows who else you watch that you just haven't admitted to out loud. Girl, the universe didn't do shit. You did this on your own. And on that note, she she goes on this like long thing about how she has reached out to Jordy and several other YouTubers because Jordy alludes that he has information that she like privately reached out to him or whatever. So she just spills the beans. So, we're, okay. So we're doing a little bit of a, uh, what, what do you want to call this? A uh, cliffhanger, if you will. I can just tell you. I watched, like I said, I've seen a couple of his videos. I saw in one where he said something like we should... Amberlynn should like, like, we should just talk. I don't remember what it was. So I was like, okay. Because I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. I'm not this like cold hearted person. I'm not malicious. Like truly people have the wrong idea of me. <laughs> and I have to laugh because she sent whatever this is as a peace offering. I found his Instagram and I sent him an emoji. It was just the waving hand and he replied back to it. I didn't respond. I didn't know what to say. I just, it was kind of like a, a peace offering, if you will. An emu G? Girl, what? An emu G? An, a who? <laughs> like, why do you have to try to make everything so fun and quirky? Girl, you, you grew up at the same time I did. You know what a fucking emoji is, right? Like, we literally grew up with them. We, we were the first people to use emojis, okay? Girl, get it together. But yeah, she says that she's also trying to make peace offerings with other channels, myself included. And I'm just like, 
I wouldn't call what you did in my DMs a peace offering. I don't think it was malicious by any means, but it never felt like you were trying to come make peace with me. It was you coming to defend yourself in my, in my DMs. And when I didn't agree with you trying to defend yourself, you just stopped replying. And then you came back a few days later and did it all over again. To which I said, stop DMing me. <laughs> like, what is this doing? What What's your goal here? And then thankfully you took that advice and you stopped DMing me. But regardless, why are you spending so much time in the DMs of reaction channels and or people talking about you? Like, I know of at least me, Jordy, Young Dumb Honey Bun, Callie, and Rich Lux, and there's probably more. <laughs> there's probably more out there who either I'm just like not aware of or who haven't disclosed it um, like the rest of us have, which is fine. You know, there's no, no pressure to do that. But I'm just saying like, that's so many people with just the people that I'm aware of. Like, why? What is your, <laughs> like, why? <laughs> just move on. If you don't like us, if we're causing you this much mental anguish or whatever, which I'm to some extent, like not even sure how much mental anguish we could possibly be causing you if you continuously come back to our channels and react to our channels and things like that. But it's just like, just move on. Don't don't give us attention. I want to DM you anyways. My my days of wanting to DM you are long in the past. <laughs> long, long in the past. I'm just trying to watch you as, as any other audience member, okay? She also brings up again that she's not doing anything for reaction channels. Like, she's not going to step up her content for us. Like she pulled up Zachary Michael's video, I think it was like two, three weeks ago, and he, it, was a, it was a clip of him going, boring, boring, end the video, end the video. You, you gotta step it up, hon. You have to step it up. I'm not, this is where you are fucking, like, confused, maybe? I'm not stepping it up for you guys. I'm sorry, but I'm not. And let me just be clear that anytime I say that you're boring. This is not a request for you to be less boring. This is just me simply stating a fact about what I'm watching. It's my reaction, if you will. And you are welcome to make whatever content you would like on your channel. You don't have to step anything up for me. However, you might want to consider stepping it up for your audience, you know? But if you're fine with the views you're getting, then I love that for you, bestie. She also, I don't even know what compelled her to say this, but she was talking about, like, potential types of content she could make that wouldn't be relatable. And you know what's not relatable? A 500-pound girl skydiving. <laughs> I'm not doing it. And to be clear, I don't know that anybody's asked for an almost 500 pound girl to go skydiving, but now that she mentions it, I have to see it. I want to see it. Give me that content, Amberlynn. I want to see you skydive. I mean, skydiving is something I'd love to do myself. So for me, that is relatable. If you went out and skydived, I would be all about it. I'd be like, wow, that is stunning that you did that. But also there's so many things that she could do to be relatable and entertaining. And she just refuses all of those suggestions. And she just has to go to like the most absurd thing she could think of in her head, which is a, a 500 pound girl skydiving. Like she can't possibly think of anything more interesting that she could do in her day to day life, which is fine. But again, this is, it's, it's your audience who have to deal with that. And that's why people find you boring. And then she gets to the end and I have to believe that she just like had talked herself in circles and that's why she said this really confusing sentence. Because my vlogs are not designed to be vlogs, if that makes sense. They're not designed for some like false character development or storylines. Like this truly threw me all the way off because you just spent the entire video talking about how vlogs are intended to be boring and show just everyday life. And now you're saying that your vlogs aren't supposed to be vlogs? And now the definition of vlogs have changed to something about creating false narrative stories, characters, like, what are you saying? Do you, do you listen to the stuff that comes out of your mouth as you're saying it? And then also when you're going back and editing the video? 
And then right at the very end, she just has to talk about copyright and threatening to strike people, specifically in this case, Jordy. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> so many, okay, 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 let me start from the beginning. So in YouTube uh, studio, there's this section where it's the copyright section. YouTube actually, baby girl, what do you do? YouTube actually has a section in Creator Studio where um, it shows the copyright section, which shows the videos that are on YouTube that have your video in it, um, like a certain percentage. It'll show, you know, the percentage of it and whatnot. And it gives you the option to send out a copyright strike. That's why when people tell me like I have false copyrighted in the past, so not true. <laughs> I would never do that. But a lot of his videos have been popping up in my little section. You guys wouldn't even believe thousands of videos. Thousands of videos are in that copyright section where I can just strike, strike. It just is one click, strike, strike. Don't do it, won't do it, I haven't done it. And she brings up this part of YouTube Studio. It's in mine too, and there are a few videos that come up from when people have used clips from my videos or things like that. But there, there's a spot where YouTube will tell you if content you've uploaded to YouTube has ended up in other people's videos on YouTube. And it's really useful. There were actually some. There's like these like random bots that were reposting all of my 1,000 pound sister videos for whatever reason. And like for those, I copyright struck them because they were clearly just try, trying to completely reuse my videos, right? But just because something shows up in there doesn't mean that it's not like fair use or transformative, which is why I'm not convinced she understands the copyright system at all. She seems to think that just because something shows up in there, that it automatically means that it is grounds to be struck because of copyright. It totally ignores how something may or may not be transformative. And <laughs> this is why I'm just like, I don't trust anything she says about the research or understanding or learning she's done about the copyright system on YouTube. But I I would be curious to see what would happen to her if she really did try to strike Jordy. From what I can tell, like whenever he comes up on videos and people are in my comments, folks seem to really enjoy him and like him, those people that do watch him. And I can't imagine that striking him would end well because it's even more clear that his stuff is transformative compared to like bottle or apathetic facts. And I know those are highly debated, but in, in my opinion, just from watching this video, he not only transformed it, he fast forwarded, which she criticized at one point, like, why are you fast forwarding me? But like fast forward it so he was not reacting to her 100% of just her video. Like there were parts missing because he didn't watch the entire video on his channel. And so it's just like, Girl, what, what grounds? On uh, what grounds would you have to strike him? So, I, you know, I would like to see her fuck around and find out. And she ends the video letting us know that professional YouTuber of the year, Amber Lynn Reed, somehow lost part of the footage and doesn't understand how that happened and doesn't understand why people think she's so reactable. And also, people privately tell her how much they love her. And honestly, I'm so glad you get those messages. You know, when somebody tells me that they enjoy my channel, that my channel brings some kind of peace to them or helps them with their anxiety or things like that, like it really, you know, makes me feel better about what I'm doing and it makes me feel um, very grateful that I have people like that. And it reminds me that those are the people that I'm making my content for. So I recommend you listen to those people. You keep making content for those people because those are the ones that are really enjoying it and seem to enjoy you just doing what you enjoy on your channel. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that was the one, one hour long video uh, summarized hopefully to significantly less than an hour. Although I don't know, it's hard to say once I add in all the clips how long this video will be. But I hope you all enjoyed this video today and I just wanna thank Wonder once again for sponsoring today's video. If you're interested in getting a free trial of their premium app, 
go check out the link down below in the description and a pinned comment. Thank you so much for watching today. If you're brand new to my channel, make sure to subscribe down below, hit the bell button so you get a notification every single time I post a new video. Also make sure to leave me a comment, hit like, click share, and follow me on all my social media, including my Twitch channel, my TikTok, my Cameo, check out my merch, and above all else, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye!